as the Cardinals won their second straight game. Paul DeYoung launched his 12th home run of the year to help St. Louis improve to 33 and 45. Charlie Milo, dang good game. Moving on up, baby. Moving on up. Da, da, da. Dang good game. Hicks is remarkable. He's dang good. Hicks is remarkable how he's turned things around. Mm-hmm. And he wants the ball now. He wants it, baby. When he had three straight saves, he went to Ollie after two and said, I want the ball. you got to love that. I, I do like that. And, he and was Montgomery was back. solid. His uh, ERA in uh, June is like, oh, just a shade over one. Last night, commanding the strike zone, throwing strike after strike, gave up a home run on a mistake pitch, gave up an unearned run on an error. And, and uh, Gio bailed him out a little bit. That was good. And Arenado, again, <clears throat> if you notice, watch. He goes the other way. Yeah, to right field. So I asked him about that because he has been. He said in that in this case, they probably just mishit it. It wasn't intentional. Oh, really? <laughs> just, which is kind of cool. Uh, but, yeah, things are – and you're in the Central, so you're eight games back. As bad as things have gone, you're eight games back. And in this division, you go on a four-game winning streak. Suddenly you're right back in, yep. the, in the thick of things. Things are looking good, eh, Charlie? Well said. It was a good game. It was a good, well-played – Baseball game, you had drama. You had seventh-inning drama. And I think it also, it also goes to show you the difference between winning and losing. Because the Cardinals have been in a lot of spots like they were last night. Now, hopefully they continue to win those games. But all it takes, look, the difference between us describing Jordan Montgomery's outing, if all of a sudden you have a double in the gap and Gio gives up those inherited runners, we're talking about a different situation. So credit to Gio. Yep, and uh, Monty overall pitched pitched very well. He's been their their best starter all season long. I hope they resign him if they can. Yeah, it'd be nice to have him uh, around for a couple more years, especially with only a couple rotation spots filled up for uh, for next year. But I just think we we talked the last several weeks about losing those close games, losing one run games. That that game hinged in the seventh inning on on could Geo come in and clean up that mess. And he did. Cardinals win the game. Give him Walk, credit. Walker, too. Extended the streak, 16 games. Pretty good. Pretty good. You know, Gio's got a spot in the seventh and mainly the eighth inning. You know, it's he's like, – like what Rammer said. Uh, Cole doesn't have his headphones on, but how Rammer said, it's a real thing, though, when you have a guy that is a, either pitching in the eighth or ninth inning. There, That is a big difference. Sometimes there's guys that pitch better as a setup, man. You know, they're not always as comfortable when they come in and have a small lead in the ninth inning. Yeah, But I am really happy for Montgomery. I try not to look too hard into the win-loss record of, of starting pitchers because it, it, it can sometimes be a poor representation of their ERA if they're not getting run support. But Montgomery is a guy that was not getting a whole lot of run support at the beginning of the year, and he's been excellent all year. He, he gives – he's had a couple bad eyes, but, you know, he, he gives the team a the chance to win every time he goes out there. Yeah, I think so. I think he's the best starting pitcher on this team. I really do. Yeah. I think you're right on that. And, and his ERA would show that, too. It's just good to see him getting wins. I should have got that in a trivia yesterday, but I didn't. I wasn't going to bring it up. I didn't. I try not to bring up negative but I didn't. things. About Jim, sometimes I will. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I think yesterday, look, if you go back to London, the first game was abysmal, let's be honest. Mm. And then if you're watching the second game early, yeah. you're even thinking, oh, my God. That first inning. Here we go again. So give the Cardinals credit because it did feel like they really needed that split in London. They got it. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty, Cam. You got the splitty. And London. How about that, How about that for a run? Oh, I and like then that. You, you roll it into coming back. You get back on the, uh, the central time zone. You get acclimated. Astros, I know they don't have the greatest record. They are the defending World Series champs. You're facing a very good pitcher. That's, that's an impressive win. And this is a tough Stretch of games when you're talking about Astros, Yankees, right. Marlins specifically to basically, and then you have what White Sox after that, but to kind of roll into the All Star break and a lot, a lot of what they do at the trade deadline, I think, is going to have to do with how they perform the next couple weeks. Counterbalance, um, they they beat a really good pitcher, an outstanding pitcher last night, taking pretty solid at bats and, and getting to them, which isn't easy to do. Although the Astros have big injuries. Alvarez is out, Brantley's out, Altuve's out. So you didn't really see the Astros at full strength last night. On the other side of that to me is that the Cardinals, it's cliche now because Ollie's mentioned it a few times, but they are punching back. Yeah. When bad things happen, they still are able to mount some sort of attack. And I do think this is an important stretch because the Astros are still good. 
and then the Yankees are, are in town. So if you're going to make a move, you you, you got to do it against some better opponents. Now, they put themselves in this position because they've lost to a lot of bad teams early on. Now it's time to get it together. Being in the Central, they still have a shot. They're still 12 games under 500. It's hard to act like everything's right again, but things are heading in a much better direction. Uh, hopefully the, the starting rotation can get more performances like they got at a Montgomery last night. Helsley, by the way, here's the other side of that, too, is that Helsley hasn't even thrown yet. He's mm. still in shutdown mode. He's got a forearm issue, and he, w- he was supposed to see a doctor yesterday to see if he could start doing some things. So he's out for a while. Jordan Hicks has kind of saved the season. And if they end up continuing to play better baseball and get back in the mix, it's because of Hicks, a guy who a lot of people wanted to, to throw away. <clears throat> Dang right. I was more impressed. Geo pointed at a pop-up instead of a homer. I did see that. Yeah. I was hoping, please catch that. So he's, he's Don't been, let this happen again. He's been doing the pop-up thing. Well, it was the one home run. I believe, was it? There's a meme out of it. I remember seeing it. It wasn't Mikey Stremski, was it? It was another. No, it was Pittsburgh. It was Pittsburgh. Keep Brian, I think. Okay. He pointed up, and then it went out. <laughs> there, uh, there's a few of those, though. Yeah. Uh, Fran Valdez is 10th in the AL Cy Young predictor right now, according to ESPN. So he's very Cardinals good. Are a good hitting two. team, and they can hit good pitching when they're on. They still have a lot of guys who aren't hitting. You look at it, Gorman, Edmund. There's a bunch of guys who aren't hitting like they should. Yeah. who We've seen them hit better, and we expect at some point to come around. I mean, there are a lot of things that can go right for this ball club going forward. The question is, will it? You know who I'm happy for? Paul DeYoung. Yes. Because I think for a while there you could make the case that his big league future was on the precipice. And I'm not saying he's going to be back with the Cardinals. That's a lot of money that you'd have to pay him. But I think he's solidified himself this year of getting another big league gig. Whether that's a utility type or a starting shortstop, I I just think that for a while there, man, he was really struggling. He was in the minors for a long oh, he's time. Taking a beating. So whatever he did, and I know, I know. Look, he was really good early. He fell off. He's got good power numbers. Look, he still plays shortstop, and he can hit a home run. There's value there, and I'm happy that it, it seems like he's back on a track to have a nice, lengthy MLB career. He's not. He's not that old. No, How old is he? Was he about thirty? Yeah, and to me, he has value. Like, to me, there's no question the Cardinals are going to put or look at when, and they would like him to be their shortstop next season. I don't think that's a secret by any stretch. But DeYoung, what he's done this year, he's still good defensively. and I think there's a debate whether he has any value. I think he does for the right team. And if you look at his numbers with the free agent shortstops, I think we had a graphic. I think Fox had a graphic, too. His numbers offensively are right around – these big dollar shortstops that teams signed as free agents, he has value for the right team, a team that's contending that suddenly has issues with their shortstop. Like, I look at a team like the Yankees, right? They, their shortstop situation is kind of in flux. He would have value to a team that needs that piece because he's a solid defensive shortstop, and he's got pop, and you don't see a lot of shortstops come around that have that combo. Fellas. Would you sign Montgomery, and what would you think he would want for money and years? Thanks, Gerard from Delaware. What's up, dude? Six one eight or six? Uh, go Blue Hands. Go, go Blue Hands. Go Blue Rocks. Go Blue Rocks. What do you think kind of coin he's going to get? He's thirty. <laughs> he's coming off of uh, last couple of years. I mean, three point five two ERA this year. His his uh, combined ERA Yankees and Cardinals last year three point four eight three point eight three the year before. He's Look, a lefty. He's a lefty. That's that's about. It's going to be about twenty million per year. It's probably going to be a deal that's around five years and a hundred million. That that's the going rate for a a strong yep. starting pitcher who's about thirty years old. I would think. 100%. So if I'm the Cardinals, I'd I would come do in with that average and try to get him for three years with an option or something like that to say, look, because I know he does like it here. He he it, it tore his heart out leaving the Yankees. It was obvious when he first got here. But I think he's found a, a comfort zone. And if you could get to him now and say, let's take the risk out of it, we'll put the risk on us, 
there's a chance you could forego making more money, but let's get it done. So look at Miles Michaelis. They just give him the extension, which was essentially two years, forty million, but they paid him some this year. So it was kind of like a two year, what thirty two million dollar extension. Um, but but again, they paid him more money this year. So he's thirty four. He's about to be thirty five years old, Miles Michaelis, in uh, in August. So Jordan Montgomery is a good four years younger. So I agree with what the Cardinals should try. I don't think there's any way Jordan Montgomery signs for less than five years. I wouldn't. If you're him, hell no. You're going to hit market. Make that money. Yeah, I think you could probably get him for four. Hmm. But I mean, that's we're just splitting hairs here. But if I'm the Cardinals, I go in with a big average annual salary, <clears throat> but a shorter term. Okay, that's reasonable. I do I do it today? Yeah, get him locked in. I want to give a shout-out to the best damn radio show going, and also kudos to Charlie and Kenny Wallace for the spotlight on Jughead a couple days ago. What's Jughead? Jughead is uh, Kenny's very popular friend. His name is Frankie Rollins. He's his crew member, really funny, nice guy, who's had a ton of health issues in recent years, heart attacks. He's had some cancer. He got hit hard by COVID. Oh, yeah. So uh, he's a very popular guy, and... uh, Kenny did an interview with him, and all of the fans love it because he's kind of part of the family. If you look at this as a reality show, he's a, he's a sidekick type guy that everybody likes. I, I know him from Twitter, mm-hmm. from Kenny's Twitter feed. He's a great, great guy. A black hole doesn't swallow things whole. It literally tears everything apart to a uh, molecular level, Gino. All right. Well, well. It's not good. You don't want to go into a black hole. That's all. Thanks, Gino. That's your opinion. Yeah, it's true. That is true. They might have, like, great delis in there. That's what I was thinking. They never know. They might have some dang good food, you know? Steak fries, really good brisket. God, it's so weird. Black holes, man. There's so much out there that it's just so – it's too much going on. It's hard to keep up with it. That's why, to me, when they say, like, this little flying saucer was seen, it just seems if you're going to make the trek from – so far away we can't even fathom. They bend time, though, probably right? Gonna, you're bending you're probably going to have a better than a little saucer. I, I don't know. Well, ooh. They're mm-hmm. watching us now, Jimmy. They're watching us now. <laughs> I watched that fire in the sky the other day. Scary-ass alien movie. Horrifying. It's supposed to be a, a true story. A movie or documentary? It's, it's, it's based on a true story. 1993. Abduction? Yes. Implants? Probing? Watch, just go on YouTube. Probing? And Mm. watch what this guy had to go through, Jimmy. Mm. And it's called Fire in the Sky. We've talked about it before. Scary-ass movie. Do you believe people have been abducted? Yeah. I mean, I I, kind of want to believe it. I kind of do. I I do think there's something out there, man. There's just too, it's too big. It's so big. Oh, there it is. Oh, my God. There it is. Set the boy close on the twos and threes. Dang. That was a hardcore scene right there. Jimmy's got to – you got to send that to Jimmy. Let him look at it. No, I'm good. Am I missing uh, – hold on. Am I missing what is behind the Mark Witten bobblehead from last night? Is it because of the amazing yet obscure four-home run game he had 30 years ago? If it has nothing to do with that, then it seems sort of random and bizarre. What about a Todd Zeal or Milt Thompson bobblehead next? Dusty Lane. They do all these specialty bobbleheads. I don't think that was, like, the main giveaway. And why would you complain about somewhere (laughs) a former Cardinal? I think fans are interested in all those guys. I think you're right. Part of history. So you buy a specialty ticket. You get to meet them. You get a bobblehead. That's awful. Why are they doing that? Cheap chokers. If the Blues had, like, uh, some random guy in the, in the 90s do a bobblehead, people would be excited about it. Just any random dude. Like, they would. It's like, I remember watching you. Here, I'll, I'll go to that and bobblehead. Everyone, like, everyone remembers, most Cardinal fans of a certain age would remember hard-hitting Mark, Mark Witten. Everyone knows that. Without knowing, I mean, it's got to be tied up with the four-homer game, correct? Yeah, I guess. It's got it. I don't know that, but, I mean— they're not just going to have a bobblehead for that, Mark Witt. No, they've they've done it with like Bo Hart. They just I I don't know if it. They, but they, maybe Hart, they try to tie it in. Bo Hart was his own little phenomenon. Yeah, they had Daniel Descalso back doing one of those. You know, I just think it's champion. A, it's a cool thing that you bring back part of your history. Yeah, I and like. You buy a specialty ticket. I think they call it like he signs at the Bud Bash or whatever that is. Yeah. You get an autograph, a picture with the guy, and you get a bobblehead. If, like, Gino Cavallini came and had a night, people would love that. How dare they? How dare they? Here he is to save the day. Yeah.